Hello YouTube, this is Christian coming to you with a little leatherwork um, video and thank you for tuning into my channel. Um, as I outlined to you last week, um, I have been modifying my M8 Miguron Glear and um, was pretty kind of baffled to see how much I liked it. And um, also I had a closer look at, at the sizes when oh, I had them side by side, my big idea design bolt action pen and uh, the Migoron. And I thought, oh well, those two, they, they are so perfectly matched in terms of uh, uh, color scheme and, and size that I actually wanted to make a pouch for them. So initially the plan was to, to go about and actually document and, and film every aspect of, of making this particular pouch which uh, I wanted to upload today to you. But as uh, things progressed I had to change the plan around. I was initially starting to form uh, the sheath or the slip of the Maguron knife and uh, had to go to a slightly different leather than I would usually use. Uh, usually I have a nice Italian Venice um, Cow cowhide that I'm using that is kind of chestnutty in color and I tried to form everything and it was about 10 minutes in that it was quite obvious that things were turning to custard and um, I had to go to just a regular Vectan russet and that's a little bit thicker but it forms easier and so I ended up uh, making it out of that and then dyeing the entire thing. Um, this went terrible in so many ways that I thought, well, I can't can't really put that out there uh, because I want to make videos that show you how to do things and not how not to do them. And I totally also underestimated the amount of time that uh, it would take doing it in front of the camera with uh, documenting everything. And uh, I just plain ran out of time and... Uh, it was a complete mess up. So, nonetheless, uh, I, I think the concept is still um, a valid one and I'm going to remake it and once I get uh, to the point where, where I want to um, remake this particular pouch, uh, I'm going to make a video of it. But uh, you can see this is clearly not quite up to standard. Unfortunately, I just finished through with it or went through with it uh, in order to kind of prove the concept. And I thought I'll, I'll show you, and um, yeah, but but this is not a representation. And you can see if you just look at it side by side, um, this is just not up to the standard. That's for a number of reasons. For one, uh, tanning and and wet forming that particular kind of leather, uh, you have to take your time. And I was rushing it. That was uh, absolutely my mistake. And you can see all these little tooling marks on there and little imperfections on, on the surface of it. Um, <clears throat> that kind of really got me a little bit upset because that usually doesn't happen with, with my work. But uh, as you rush things, um, things don't always go to plan. You can also see that um, these, these are wet formed and I didn't have the time to obey the proper uh, drying times. And as a consequence of that, after I had it all pricked and, and the holes punched through and stitched up, the leather was still pulling in um, and contracting. And um, for that reason alone, you can see how uh, the stitch lines are not perfectly straight. And around here, uh, the stitch line wandered. Um, and I tried my best trimming it up to an acceptable level, but it's just not, not there. However, um, I'm, I'm going to put it on, I'm going to wear it uh, for my daily workshop use. It's going to be plenty good enough just to prove that I actually want to use it. And uh, once I'm beyond that point, I'm actually going to redo it in more appropriate materials and with a little bit more time scheduled in for filming it all and, and, and documenting the building process of, of that particular pouch. So. The idea behind this one was uh, just that I have occasions where I can't really put the knife into into my front pocket in my trousers and uh, 
it, I have a lot of scenarios where on a daily basis I just need need a pen handy and um, I don't like it uh, in, in, in the jersey I just like it either in my in my wallet or um, have it in my bag but having it available on a, on a slip pouch was certainly appealing to me and once again as they kind of look nice together I thought well I give it a go um, another thing that for me spoke against purchasing a ready-made uh, slip slip pouch uh, was simply the fact that with with pocket knives that have a pocket clip um, you you have to go with a subtle leather so with a um, really soft kind of um, temperament in the leather and then you end up uh, stuffing the pocket clip into into that one um, and, and that's something I, I particularly don't don't like um, in this particular case we, w what I've done is I just created a groove for the pocket clip to go in and that would actually look quite nice once it's inserted and uh, at the same time offer a little bit of protection against rubbing for the for the pocket clip itself and uh, also I think a, a nicely colored pocket clip um, well this one perhaps due to usage not as much but you can already see the point I'm trying to make is that you get these rubbing marks on your titanium and uh, if you have it just sitting under a leather sheath um, then a lot of that uh, problem is, is going to be mitigated. So that was one aspect of it and the other thing is that quite often if you get pouches like that they loop for your belt up here and that just means that thing is flopping around somewhere on my hips and uh, it's sticking out of my jersey. In most cases I, I really actually don't want this so I'm just going with a straight patch that uh, threads into my belt and therefore this one sits a little bit higher and um, that means it's nicely tucked away under my jersey so if I just put my belt into this one then you can see roughly where this would be sitting and this is also a bit of a tighter fit which is uh, something I prefer I usually have 40 millimeter leather belts so you can see that this is actually sitting a little bit on the high side and this is how I like to have it, uh, mostly because I don't have as much sticking out under my jersey or pullover, what, whatever I'm wearing at the day. So it's nicely tucked away and, and a little bit more stealthy. So um, yeah, and uh, I'm going to be wearing that for, for a couple of weeks and see whether that is actually functional for me. I was a little bit concerned about how I access the knife. Um, and one thing you, you mostly want with uh, holsters like that if you want to call it that or slips you want the backing of it to go a little bit higher so that when you actually put your knife into it um, you, you can't really look all too well to, to your side and actually see what you're doing so you kind of want to have a stop to put your knife against when you're, when you're starting to, to slide it in and so that's the reason why I have that higher back there and also to give it a little bit of a, of a color contrast but um, with that comes comes the issue of actually how do you take that knife out uh, since it doesn't have any any kind of lanyard so um, the idea here is to to just have a slot at the back so that you can grab it at the top here um, on the top of your pocket clip where you're not compressing against the pocket clip itself but rather you, you just hold it up there and you get your thumb in behind it and so you can slide it out with ease. So that's the idea behind that one and as far as uh, the pen is concerned there, there wasn't any need to uh, go into too much detail. That's pretty much just a piece of kangaroo leather um, that has uh, also been wet, wet formed and by virtue of this particular pen design which, which is a little bit wider here at the bottom um, offers you a good retention just due to the fact that the leather is actually formed and I'm not sure if you can actually hear it but if you if you put it in there's that satisfying flop when it goes into into that area down there and there it's seated and, and it won't come out easily it's not going to overcome that spot without a deliberate effort so that's uh, a rather nice feature and I also like the overall looks of it um, 
once uh, minor cosmetic issues uh, have have been sorted. So that's just a little update. So that pretty much complements uh, my set of everyday carry items. As far as my belt, uh, my phone pouch, and my wallet is concerned, and uh, now I also have my pen and my knife uh, in a pouch. Ultimately, it's going to be in the same color leather, but in order to do so, I have to do a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I have to get uh, some back tan leather that is more easily formed, uh, but at the same time, not as thick as this particular piece. This is a three millimeter thick leather, and you can see that it's uh, struggling to get into the tighter radiuses of the knife. Um, what you would want to do is really go um, with a much thinner material similar to what we have here for the pen. And then in order to achieve that color I would also need to get some of my uh, usual leather split which uh, means just from the supplier they will uh, put it through a machine which will split the leather into a thinner layer. And then uh, what I can do is um, I can form the shape out of the plain russet and uh, put that and actually glue it on top and then stitch it together and that will give you something that is more similar to that which is also a com composite construction made up out of two layers of leather. One is uh, that Venice chestnut and uh, the other one on the inside is just a russet leather for um, its formability. So <clears throat> that ultimately will be the plan for that one. As far as um, the pencil side is concerned, I like the color contrast. I'm really quite fond of that. But um, you, you can see uh, just from me uh, rubbing that in with these light colors. My, my tools are usually clean and um, that also has been sanded down afterwards. But the slightest amount of rubbing even with a clean freshly washed hand and uh, you, you get these uh, darker patina spots, which is fine over time, I, I don't mind it at all, but uh, for a new product you, you kind of try to avoid uh, this kind of look. And um, so I got to think about perhaps going with a different color accent or differently treated leather uh, for, for this side. And so yeah, that's just a quick update, um, but overall I think um, I really like um, the presentation of the two. Uh, together and I really like um, the way the, the pouch is constructed. Execution aside, I'm still trying to get over um, that it looks a little bit like a butcher job but um, that's okay for, for the time being and once I uh, find the time I'm gonna be redoing it and hopefully set a weekend aside to to film all the aspects of it. This, uh, quite a bit of process involved, there's drying time, times involved, so I can't do it in one continuous video. Um, I will have to do a fair bit of cutting and um, there's an awful lot of tools involved for, for something like that as well. And um, that, that just means you really got to set uh, some serious time aside uh, to do it and I'm at the moment just not really geared up to, to be doing it. Uh, and um, as I said before, I kind of underestimated the amount of uh, time it would take to document the making of, of a pouch like that. But um, once um, I get to that point, I'll certainly give an update on that one. All right. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, and I have another review of a backpack coming up, up shortly. Uh, this time I think it's going to be the Maxpedition Sitka. Um, most likely. I have another few Vanquist items that I want to review as well. Uh, that's upcoming um, on this weekend as well. Um, so stay tuned and um, see you soon. Have a good weekend. Bye bye.